It is the riot, and this is the podcast. Dun dun dun. <laughs> dun dun dun. Uh, actually, nothing to be nervous about. Just another podcast in the riot library. So, everything good for today? <laughs> um, uh, today, we talk about how you could play Call of Duty for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, some great, idea, great ideas that Nikki and I have as far as government agencies and real estate. I mean, we have. We could change the world, or at least a couple of things. It'd these are be fun. Some, these are some possibilities. So let us know what your thought is about it. Oh, uh, we also get the synopsis for the Amazon Lord of the Rings series. Uh, a weird side effect of having too much caffeine that I totally know what it's talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Nintendo World making twenty thousand dollars a day. Oh, what the-, the heck is a the Super Nintendo World? You kind of glossed over, but it's not. It's not good news. So. It's just, well, it's just, it feels like it. it's, it's real sad because everybody's been looking forward to that, but we'll go over why and what that means for Nintendo in Tokyo. So we talk about what a boogaloo is, cyberpunk 2077, sea shanties, toilet thieves, Russian thieves, <laughs> and why Nikki can't even. <laughs> what ends the podcast today? Uh, we're not shocked about it, and we're excited so that Obi can have uh, it again. So what we learn about uh, is a new discovery, and we're just, again, super excited about Obi and what he'll unveil at the end of the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We're so excited. you guys enjoy <laughs> enjoy this podcast. Nikki and I are going back into our uh, our holes, and we'll emerge again tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. All right, bye. Bye. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Listen, everybody's got an opinion about President Trump and his last few days in office and blah, blah, blah. But let's not forget one thing, Nikki. He gave us Space Force. (laughs) And for that... (laughs) We thank him. (laughs) For that, we can remain grateful. (laughs) I mean, I don't feel like I hear about it as much as I not expected, but like, will it still stay around? I, yeah, I don't think you just, I don't think you can just wipe it away. Like, I think once it gets set up, it's like, well, we got a thing now. Like, <laughs> just, I don't know how, how much will be dedicated towards it, but, you know, it is, it, it pops back in the news every so often. Well, here's what I'm looking at. Space Force is not the same as Space Command. Okay. Space Command. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, What? <laughs> Is not all the space stuff in the space? No, it's not. Okay. Well, Space Command has been located in Colorado, apparently, for a really long time. Uh, but Space Command, not Space Force, uh, has apparently been given the clearance to get a new $1 billion headquarters. And it's going to be moved from Colorado to Alabama. Hey. Okay. So. Wow. Um, <laughs> I mean, I Look guess that. I guess that's fine. It's just to the outsider uh, looking in. That's a lot of money. That's that's a billion dollars right there. Yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. You know, uh, I saw that. Uh, what was it? Epic Games. Mm-hmm. They just bought an old abandoned mall, and they're turning that into some office space. So, I mean, you know, has Space Command considered maybe going in and buying an existing space and maybe just renovating it a little bit? You know, we we joked earlier about Obi's flipping his games and like making that into a show. You could totally make this into a show if you moved into an old mall and rehabbing it and doing all the space stuff here. And you could make that into a uh, a kind of fun thing to watch. But instead, they're just using the billion dollars to build a whole new one. Yeah, I mean, you can just see the host is not like, you know, today on Flip This Mall, <laughs> U.S. Space Command needs a new home. Hey, We're actually I- going to show them two different malls, <laughs> and they're going to be able to choose from which one they like better. I actually think it's a great idea. Again, look at every city that you're in. What do you have? A lot of empty malls. That's actually a possibility. There'd be more than one choice if you wanted to move your big office into one of those places. <laughs> I don't know, sir. It seems nice. There's a Starbucks right over there, and there's easy freeway access. I it's mean, large, it, you know, it's spacious, and they're practically giving them away. <laughs> and word is we'll get some tax incentives, you know, by moving into this. What do you, I, I like it. I like it. Well, can we get rid of the fountain out front? I, we can't have the fountain. Or what if we put a space shuttle 
in the fountain. Hey, I bet if you found, um, I'm sure there's a mall somewhere with one of those already there. <laughs> like that was That's the problems. that was the mall's theme during the time. <laughs> like, no, I'm not talking about the ride out there for a quarter. I want it in the fountain. <laughs> well, we can do that. I. You know what? I've got a friend of mine that's a metal worker on the other side of town. You're going to be amazed at what he can do. So this is not Space Force. This is Space Command. And they're building a new headquarters moving from Colorado to Alabama. And it takes them a billion dollars to move there. Well, they were until they just heard this. And right now they're funding a new show, Flip This Mall. You thought they were bad live? Well, just wait until you hear this. The Worst of the Riot Podcast with Obadiah and Nikki. You know, I Nikki has allowed something in her life that I have not let into my life yet. And I only say yet because I feel like every day it's at the door like, hello, can I come in? <laughs> closer no, I and won't closer. <laughs> I won't come in unless you invite me. Will you invite me in? <laughs> Wait, what is that? Is that a vampire or something? <laughs> Maybe. They don't come in unless invited. <laughs> right. So, uh, and I'm talking about Grubhub and DoorDash and Uber Eats and whatever. Uh, I see that Grubhub has found a new way to try to allow their blood-sucking life into mine. (laughs) So, they're just like, listen, yes, we're going to deliver you food that's going to kill you slowly. Yes, we're going to enable you to stay home when food was sometimes the only thing that pulled you out. Yes, all of this is true. But now we're doing it with the Girl Scouts. I actually think this is a fabulous idea. I mean, Girl Scouts for cookies. Uh, so it'd be last season probably was at the start or I don't know. Maybe that season was fine. But this year, in order to sell Girl Scout cookies, they would normally set up at a a store, you know, like outside or they would go door to door and they're probably and have been told that, no, you can't do that this year. So how are they supposed to sell cookies? Well, I'll tell you how, Nikki. You'll be able to register with Grubhub starting on February 1st. Uh, You'll go in, put in your zip code or address to find the Girl Scout troop in your area. They will then be alerted to your purchases and those deliveries will be made between 4 and 7 p.m. I wonder why it's the 4 to 7 window. Like, are they are they delivering them? Or, like, is it still a Grubhub driver? My, or what is it? See, my guess would be is that they're partnered with Grubhub, so the Girl Scouts are still making the deliveries. Oh, maybe. They'll just throw it out your door? Yeah, I mean, like, that kind of makes sense, right? They Because they still got to do the work. They still got to whatever. But this is a chance for them to... I don't know if legally, though, like if they're sending them around to all different places, whereas they, you know, used to just go around their neighborhood. I don't know who will deliver it. They're not saying. But basically, it's not available in every city. So you have to find the cookie finder site through Grubhub. And then that'll tell you if you can get Girl Scouts, you know, cookies delivered in your area. Well, I'm game. But I'm not doing it. Can't come in. Sorry. <laughs> I know you we keep were... on knocking, but just can't come in. We thought we were in the free and clear because sometimes I have a harder time saying no when someone comes to the door and they're selling something. Like I feel so bad. Like I almost have to make a lie up. Like I already ordered them, or you, know, you just don't want to say no. <laughs> just can't say no to people. Uh, so you know, you thought you got out of it, but now through Grubhub and they're waiving fees, which I thought was nice. So then that way, the local Girl Scout troop receives the full proceeds from the purchase. So that's a nice thing. Nikki, Nikki let me help you right now. I want you to say this after me. It's I can okay. say it now, but I can't say it when no, they're at no, the door. Listen. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Say, say, okay, we're, we're going to say, we have to start again. Oh. Okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. For me to say no. For me to say no. It's okay. It's okay. For me to say no. For me to say no. But what if I want the cookies? Uh, so then I, now, you know. that, uh, now we're in a whole other thing. I just want you to know if somebody comes to your door and you don't have to make anything up, it is okay <laughs> for you to say no. I'm not going to. That's like, I'll tell you, the other day I was at the Pan Express drive through and they were like, hey, do you want to make a donation to Children's oh, Hospital? And you I didn't? And you know what? I just thought for a second and I was like, yeah, I can do this. No, I would not. <laughs> no, I, I just and, can't when they're right there. And then they're like, oh, okay, fine. You can't. <laughs> I mean, after that, you heard him like, hey, the monster at the window wants his food. Spin his food. He said no. <laughs> he doesn't want to give to the sick kids. But make sure he gets his food. Or he doesn't see. It sounds so bad. But then also when they're at the door and they're all just staring at you, or you know, it's a neighbor and you you knew them anyways. <laughs> it's just really hard to be 
the mean person who wouldn't even buy cookies to help them out. So uh, it's okay to say no. But this way, if you do want Girl Scout cookies, uh, Grubhub is starting that on February 1st. The definition of insanity is putting the riot on again and again and expecting a better result. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Okay, well, uh, 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 good news, remember, good news. Yeah, right, right, right. So according to the OneRing.net, Nikki, we have the official uh, summary for their upcoming Lord of the Rings adaptation. So Amazon, you know, spent all that money on Lord of the Rings stuff, and this is supposed to be like a prequel sort of thing. I don't know if we'll all be alive when it actually comes out. It just never... It's like, I don't think it'll ever happen, but uh, slowly but surely we do get news on it every so often. That's cool. You went ultra dark with it. That's fine. Like, <laughs> don't you I, feel no like that, though? I feel like <laughs> they've talked about it for years and we have nothing. <laughs> you have like a map and that's it. <laughs> giving you a map. <laughs> All right, here we go. Like, it's going to take place during the second age of Middle Earth. So the stories that we're most familiar with are the third age of Middle Earth. Mm-hmm. The first age are in things like the Silmarillion, uh, which, you know, some of us have read and maybe some of us haven't, and that's fine. Um, but this will be the second age, a.k.a. where there's little to no writing at all about what happens in the second age. So this gives them a lot of freedom to take their clothes off. I mean, to tell <laughs> the stories. <laughs> Don't ruin it, Amazon. Okay? Lord of the Rings had Please. something special about it. Don't ruin it. <laughs> Don't ruin it. Well, that right, way, the... since there's not a lot of writing to go with it, they can have creative licensing with it and not make the fans maybe as mad compared to if they were changing up the story and from one of the other times. Well, here is the synopsis that the one ring.net has. Uh, Beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters, both familiar and new, as they confront the long-feared reemergence of evil to Middle Earth. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, and will take viewers back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, unlikely heroes were tested, Hope hung by the finest threads, and the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover the world in darkness. Who wrote that? That's impressive. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, according to this, that comes from Amazon. Okay, well, again, uh, no date on when we might be able to watch the Lord of the Rings Amazon stuff. Okay, real talk, though, like, didn't they... So, like, didn't no. they say they were starting filming already? Like, isn't that a thing now? Aren't yeah, they but doing that was that? at the start around with COVID stuff. So I'm not sure, like, in filming, I don't know. I just, because, is it still Peter Jackson or is it someone else? But, I mean, Lord oh, of the no, Rings. I, think it's, uh, I Lord- think it's something else. I mean, I think they bought the rights to use some of the art and stuff. Yeah. So maybe uh, some but, of the like, companies there. But, I mean, this notorious, anything with Lord of the Rings just has and always will take a long time. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, basically, like, get comfortable. I hear the Girl Scouts are delivering cookies now, so. <laughs> well, you're going to have a lot of time to wait. There's there's many Girl Scouts seasons that we have until this thing will be done. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It was bad enough the first time around, but now it's worse. Don't believe us? Just keep listening. You'll find out soon enough. This is the Worst of the Riot Podcast. Nikki, this article you just sent me is the weirdest <laughs> thing (laughs) well i mean a lot of people kind of ask themselves uh like at what point is too much and this is a a very odd way of uh of telling but i guess it kind of works it's something to look out for okay so this is a uh it's a survey done by statista uh they say 65 percent of those in the survey had coffee on a regular basis 44 percent uh drink two to three cups a day that's where i am um I could drink so much more, uh, but I don't. And so... Uh, so you purposefully they, drink less each day like you're aware of it? Oh, yeah. I've had to become aware of it because of some of what we're about to read. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. They say that... Uh, experts, oh, say again, that they, 
<laughs> experts say that they have up to like 400 milligrams of coffee is kind of safe. So they say that if you drink well, two cups of coffee, you're within the guidelines, you know, because everybody says, oh, coffee's good for this, good for that. So they say a little bit each day could be healthful, healthy and helpful for you. But then I think everybody crosses the line quicker than we realize. Well, and to be clear, this is actually a misprint in this article. That's 400 milligrams of caffeine that is considered safe every day. Uh, oh, so gotcha. you can have more co- yeah, so you can have more coffee than that. It's just that you can't have the caffeine. And so they report that, like, okay, you have too much coffee. You end up feeling jittery. Uh, you might experience excessive worrying, panic spells, headaches. Paranoia. And I... I can tell you right now that's true. I've experienced that. The other thing you can experience, feeling trapped. That's what they say. They is say kind of, it's the main thing to kind of look for. It's the most reported symptom of excessive caffeine intake. So if you start feeling but, trapped, they say you should maybe go down one or two cups of coffee that you've kind of, you got too much in you. Huh. I I will have to say that I, I yes. I have been there, like where I began to realize I was drinking too much coffee. One of the hardest things for me was I made a change in my medication where all of the sudden, I swear to you, coffee tastes better and I just want more of it. Yeah. It's not because I'm tired. It's not because I'm tired. It's just that I always want to be drinking coffee now for some reason. And so I have done something that I swore I would never do. And that is I've just started drinking decaf. Oh, yeah. Because (laughs) so you can still have enough, but you're not having the caffeine. Yeah, like this week I've been working from home. Like I could just slam coffee all day and that is not good. And so (laughs) I've been having, even during the riot, I've been having two cups of coffee. And then from then on out, Uh, it's been decaf. Well, let's take a look back at what does caffeine do? So basically you want caffeine because it blocks a chemical in your brain that keeps you from feeling tired, but at the same time gives you adrenaline. So that's why you get the heart rate that's fast, the body temperature that goes up. You start breathing a little bit more. And so that starts the anxiety. The anxiety gets you trapped feeling. And then that makes you feel the feeling trapped and you can't get out of it. That's when, again, a big sign you're supposed to just pull it back a little bit or switch a little bit to decaf for certain times. Yeah. So and I nobody wants to hear that. It's not the Well, I mean, we're still early in January to where maybe if it was that enough of a problem, You're still trying to cut back on caffeine. Yeah. No, it again, it's sad, but just there are other there are other ways to drink decaf. (laughs) This is Radio U's worst of the riot. Oh, we were all so excited for our trip to Japan next month. Uh, Yeah, it's not happening. (laughs) Technically, we didn't have that on the books, so. Says says you. You had your cruise. I mean, would you have been on your cruise yet, or was that still later oh, in January? Man. Oh, take thy <laughs> beak from out my heart. Oh, we had a yes, cruise. Yes, Nikki, I would be on the cruise right now. Oh, really? Oh, it would have been his first time on a cruise, and he had that scheduled. It was so cheap at the beginning of the pandemic, and people were like, oh, traveling will be fine by then, and obviously there is not okay. the cruise. <laughs> I I wasn't going to talk about this, but since you brought it up, like, let me lay out how this has worked for me. Okay. Yeah. I had, I had scheduled the last week of October to go on a trip. Um, and that is the Monday I got diagnosed with COVID. So I had to call and cancel that. It was, and it was just a cabin. I was driving to a cabin. So it's not like I was flying. Yeah, (laughs) it was, it was, I was going there with my journal and all Nope, out, like canceled. So fine, whatever, I had COVID. Then I had bought tickets to fly to Oregon. Now I did that in April because I was one of those people that was like, surely by November, this will all be ironed out and I'll be able to have Thanksgiving with my West Coast family. So got those tickets and I, you know, quote unquote, could have gone, but because I have been some kind of a weird COVID long hauler, I was still in isolation the day my flight would have left Mm -hmm. to go to Oregon. So that had to be canceled. I was going to go on a cruise. I was supposed to fly out yesterday. And (laughs) 
And it, the cruise was canceled. So it's not like OB, even though OB is, is broadcasting from home, but uh, the cruise itself, they told him they're not doing it. So that got canceled right. for that reason. That's true, but I'm at home. And why? Because I still have a fever. So every time I have planned some kind of a trip, you get a fever. My symptoms have spiked and it caused me, I wouldn't have been able to, even if. The cruise was not canceled. You, I wouldn't have been able to get on the boat. You would have had to cancel it just on your side. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even think about that. You would have had to been the one. <laughs> the fever it just won't go away. Well, don't schedule anything else then because you're going to it's going to pop back up. You don't want that. You know what? I've got I got one more. Let's let's go ahead and tie this in. Let me show you the great failure that kind of I am and is my life. Do you remember last week it was. Tuesday, I think, might have been Wednesday. What did I go do? You, I don't know. What did you go do? You do? remember after the show? I was like, I talked about it on the show. Oh, I need a blank. This is going to be different. I'm going to use this blank. It's going to change everything. Obi went out and bought a 2021 planner. So then, what happens? He gets a fever. Not like it's it's just the COVID symptoms that he had before they come back. Yep. He's just got that. They keep coming back. That that thing. And so when he has a fever, he can't come in. You can't go do anything. What are you doing? Why did you buy? It's the cursed planner. What did you do? No, it's not the planner, Nikki. Everything we've talked about has one common denominator. It's you. It's me. It's all you. Stop doing things. Well, now because you, you can't do it in any ways. But oh, my gosh, that's so Stop. weird. Stop dreaming dreams. Stop. Don't have any goals. Okay. Could you just stop it? Wow. Oh that's a lot gosh. to unpack. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to know, you've we've got a direct line to a therapist for you. That, and Let, you can talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the riot podcast. So, you know that Nikki and I have long been planning our triumphant return to Japan, except it's not a turn a return, <laughs> it's our first time there. One day, one day we will. And because we've always wanted to go, I think as a show we're going to have to go um but I we'll, do too. we'll go one day to Tokyo. We want to go to Japan. That's just a a bucket list of ours. So, they were due to open the Super Mario Land. Is it Super Mario Land? Super Nintendo World is what it's called, specifically, in Japan on February 4th. And Nikki and I had been invited an all-expenses-paid trip to cover the event on a press junket. We were very excited. And uh, but is this a no, it feels like? Have thing- well, things have changed there, too, because they've also had a uh, different mutation of COVID that has started to um, be in that area. So are they still having the opening, or what are they doing? Uh, well, they have had to do, and a state of emergency has been declared in Osaka, mm-hmm. and it's they're delaying the opening. Oh, they are? Aww. Yep. Aww. So remember how, remember how you were going to, you know... Go. Go have fun. And you were like, look, and, and to be honest, so many friends and family, not really family, but mostly friends online that were like, see, Japan is a country that knows how to handle a pandemic. That's why they're opening things because they did what they, and so here they are shutting down and I, there's part of me, that's uh, the whole thing. But <laughs> So for, um, you know, the, it's at Universal Studios, which I believe had been open, but just very limited. And, you know, they're yes. just not having travelers. So you're not being able to, uh, you know, go on vacation and stuff. But it was something more for local people to still be able to attend. But not at this point. Yeah. Well, I was looking forward to hearing about it. And I've got to tell you what, the the photos of the merch store at Super Nintendo Land. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine the pricing? Gr- no, I don't even want to think be. about it. Like the don't Nintendo, even want to think about it. If you've never been to like the Nintendo World Store, like in New York City, there's so much fun merch, but it's so expensive. But you would have to get something if you went there. Like you'd have to have. Yeah, it. I, I couldn't not have something. something. <laughs> like something. Uh, so uh, they are delaying the opening. They do not have a date yet as to when it's actually going to open. So Aww. they. 
Osaka has been designated a hot spot. So in some ways, it's kind of up to the government in that area about sure. when they're going to be able to open back up. All right. Well, um, this, they'll just have to wait for more details. But of course, better safe than having people come in and, and possibly having more problems with that. So that has been postponed for the Super Nintendo world. Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. Okay, can you guys give me a second? I I have something that I got to explain, and you guys are my people, so it's like <laughs> I've got to explain it. So listen and then a, respond. <laughs> It's such a small thing, but I got I have got to get this out. There's no way I'm the only person that is not getting this. And so here's the context. I keep seeing these headlines that talk about the Boogaloo Capitol protest. Mm-hmm. And I saw that and I was like, wow, that sure is clever for like a mainstream mainline headline. And you're like, Well, why is that clever? Because you may not know this because it's a little dated, but there used to be a running internet joke where people would say blank to electric boogaloo. And so that's because there was a movie in, I think, the 80s where it was called Breakin', which was about breakdancing, and it actually has a ton of like hip hop people that you would totally recognize. Mm -hmm. It was like a low low budget indie scene kind of movie. And the sequel to it was called Break Into Electric Boogaloo. And so when people a lot of times would be like, oh, Wonder Woman 2, Wonder Woman Boogaloo or so, something. And that would. Well, online, everybody always adds that to it in case you never knew where that came from. Right. And then I see these headlines that are like Capital Boogaloo Cap- Capital Protest. And I was like, oh, they're making the sequel joke at the New York Times? <laughs> That's incredible. But it's not. It's the name of the group of people. Yes. That's now, it. That's, <laughs> that's where this takes a turn. Uh, apparently, there are a group of, uh, they say, they call them alt-right, I don't know, whatever. But there is this right-wing group of people called the Boogaloo Boys. And I was like, okay. Otherwise, you thought okay. news outlets were using the joke? Well, I just thought I was, I have often thought at some point the news media is going to become like the people that grew up on the internet are going to become the people that are writing the headlines. And at some point something happens, right? We lose a little decorum. We become a little more like the internet. And I was like, here it is. It's the first wave. We're making the boogaloo joke at the times. What is happening? So do you feel a little Um, bit relieved for news sources that that's not what that is? Uh, yes, and I also feel like an idiot because I'm like, man, <laughs> you have so much crap in your brain that you are pulling from every time you read anything. It's no wonder you're always confused. You know, what? <laughs> About what real world and what's a meme. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like it's like how I read that book on Abraham Lincoln, and then I read the book on Abraham Lincoln <laughs> Vampire <laughs> Killer, <laughs> and now I... I I can't distinguish between the two. And the vampire hunter stuff all seems like, well, yeah, that's actually a bit believable. So it's hard yeah, it's, to to filter real. it all together and, and come out at the end with the correct information. Yeah. So New York Times is uh, making a, a break into electric boogaloo joke. That's amazing. They're not, actually. There's a, I don't know, they say that, I don't, you know what, I'm not going to say anything more because I didn't read a whole lot up about the Boogaloo Boys. I mostly was just stopped in my tracks about how wrong I was (laughs) when I read the headline. The Riot really wanted to do this live, but now they can play video games and eat rice cakes instead. This is the worst of the Riot podcast. I've got to tell you... It has been really difficult for Nikki and I over the last few weeks um, because normally we get uh, 25,000 a day (laughs) and we had recently renegotiated with Radio U and said, you know what? We know the times are difficult. We're willing to do the show for 20,000 a day. Well, we felt Um, that was only fair, right? (laughs) Yeah. And a lot of people were like, I want to make sure no one at all thinks that's true. Okay. That's, that's OB teasing. That's not true. That's not what we bring in a day. (laughs) Okay. That's not what Nikki makes it every day. Okay. (laughs) But for you, I didn't know that, that you you negotiated that. (laughs) 
We t- we typically don't talk about our salaries on the air, but okay. All right. I think it's uh, more like I for have- a, a cup of coffee a day. <laughs> you can have your favorite morning crew. Well, it's like a pot. I mean, they, they let me go back for a couple of cups. Um, but, you know, I, I used to feel like the amount of money that I was being paid was excessive. And then I see here. Now, I can't I cannot confirm this 100 percent. But apparently Rudy Giuliani, who is President Trump's attorney, was receiving twenty thousand dollars a day for his services. That's an amazing and- amount of money right there. I know with attorneys, though, and I, Obi and I were talking like I assume that's like 24 hours anytime. Uh, you know, you're paying for pretty much the whole day, but that's a lot. $20,000 a day is a lot. I'll just tell you right now, I would happily be on call all the time for 20000 a day. <laughs> even less just, than that. You know, <laughs> you I just run, be that expensive. I, I just do a couple of years like that, and then I'm pretty much, you know, set, right? Mm-hmm. Heck, man, just a couple of months, and I think we could probably wrap it up. <laughs> wow. We should have been lawyers. A day. I'm telling you, Nikki, you and I would have been great lawyers. Think about how critically we think about the news and everything. So we're always looking for the holes in the logic and all of that kind of stuff. We do a ton of reading, and then we do a ton of talking. We we're in. We could be lawyers. We could do this. What type of lawyers do you think would be? Because you know, there's we see the commercials for the other types of law firms where perhaps not as classy. <laughs> <laughs> or the very ex- be, the very expensive ones like would it be the law firm of Obadiah and Nikki <laughs> like what type would we be I want to be Kevin Fergus or whatever that guy that opens the doors I want commercials like that of me on TV <laughs> just constantly opening doors and talking about you getting paid I don't know cuz I think if you're if you're a lawyer and you're really making it like if you get a lot of money and you have that certain style you're not doing commercials so you're not no, that, the, that's the not something tier, you're doing here is not you're right. You're right. So I just like the idea of you and I taking on some cases that net us an absurd amount of money. And then eventually we just get other other people to do the work. And you and I just show up and go, mm-hmm, your honor, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Case dismissed. All you do is you read the brief going into it. And you're like, yes, I am ready for court today. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> um, maybe for in the future. You know, we're always just thinking about what will Obi and Nikki do later down the road. Not right now, but we were just noticing that $20,000 a day is a pretty good amount of money to make. It is. The other thing I would tell you, Nikki, is I think you and I could make a good team in the courtroom as well because I have a tendency to be kind of flagrant, but you're good with details. Mm -hmm. And so between the two of us, I'll provide some of the drama and you can provide some of the deets. And I think we've got something. (laughs) That's teamwork right there. We would give the riot flowers to show our appreciation, but Obadiah's probably allergic. What isn't he allergic to? This is the riot on Radio U. So cyberpunk... 2077 it's a game it's on basically every system except for a switch so if you have a nintendo switch and that's all i'm sorry it's probably never going to happen for well you you didn't want it anyways (laughs) right so uh you know it was probably the most hyped game of the year and i was somebody that while i was not kind of in on the hype i followed the hype so it was supposed to be out i think in march then they pushed it to april then it got bumped to september then they were like november and then i think was it december i don't know like it eventually came out i can't remember what the actual release release date ended up being well towards the end they were like no we need a few more weeks because they they made you seem like they wanted to get all the bugs out or at least (laughs) <laughs> they, had a, they had a lot of bugs and they wanted just a couple more weeks to make sure because they said that it was hard with having so many different consoles at that point that that was going to be the issue where it's like with our phones. You know, you might have an app that works one way on one type of phone and then you have this phone. It's not offered there. This phone, it's not as good. Different consoles bring different um, problems or you know, pluses and cyberpunk fell into that issue. <laughs> Opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they, uh, I mean, apparently it was just pretty much broken for consoles and they had been saying like, Hey, uh, we're going to launch the game. And then probably in February, we're going to have the next gen patch so that it will seem like a PlayStation five or an Xbox series X game or whatever. Uh, so what ended up happening, they say they came out yesterday and they're just like, Hey, look, we're, we're sorry. We're, we're sorry. Uh, we know it's broken. We know it's bad. Now, they already the PC, apologized. 
Yeah, but they're doing it again. Okay. Uh, the P- Basically, the PC, he, they just kind of said, like, we spent most of our time working on the PC version of the game. Now, I'm paraphrasing. He didn't say it exactly like this. And they say that they just got kind of caught up in what they could do on the PC and then very late in the process began thinking about how do we get this onto consoles. And as a result, well, they didn't. I mean, they did. There was a disc. There was a case. There was something. It had... A lot of fans, it seemed like it felt like, and I'm more of an outsider looking in, but what I observed it, it felt like people were personally offended and felt more lied to, like because Uh you would spend so much money on a game that took so long that wouldn't even, like they should have just been a little bit more transparent about some of the problems with its release instead of just trying to get you to buy it and would have said, hey, you're going to have some issues. A patch will be coming later, but people just felt like they weren't talked to about it enough ahead of time. Well, and they're not happy with the timeline, you know, because they're now saying that 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 one patch that was going to come out in February, they're like, yes, second half of 2021. And we're sorry, the game's eventually going to get fixed. And it's not it is becoming a thing where it's not a completely uncommon uh, thing that we see where a game launches. It's way broken. But then again, we see games that launch that way and then they. They really do get fixed. The other game these guys are famous for is The Witcher 3, which, as I understand it, launched in a terrible state. And, of course, now plays really well, and everybody loves it. And they're like, hey, this because this was so good, that's making the, we expect this to be great. So, I, I don't know. I don't have it yet. I was, I'm so glad that I saw this announcement because I saw it on sale for the PS4 for, like, 35 bucks or something. I was like, oh, I should buy it. Well, because I was like, I should buy it because next month they're going to have that patch yeah. and it'll be great. Nope. Give yourself some more time. No. I will not be doing that. Uh, so we'll just, uh, we'll just hang back and I'll keep playing Phoenix Rising, which I've been playing for like a month and a half. Maybe it and really still, is a good still point. Still enjoying it. Maybe you could just wait until the patch comes out. You don't have to worry about it until then. Just save your money up and then when it's all fixed, if you feel like it then... Some of the wind is out of the sails, though. But if you feel like trying it, then it might be worth it then. You might be thinking that this won't be quite as bad the second time around. Well, you'd be greatly mistaken. We're listening to the worst of the Riot podcast. My relationship with TikTok is as follows. Nikki is my filter. So (laughs) if I need to see something, she sends it to me. Done. That's right. I make sure to uh, send him only the good ones. But, Nikki, I'm going to tell you right now, they may have found the thing that's bringing me back. What is it? The sea shanties. What? You haven't? Oh, oh my gosh. (laughs) Have I not caught this on the uh, For You page or what? You're telling me that I'm up on a TikTok trend and you're not? I got you. The one like even Hudson sent it out the other day. Are you talking about those? Yes. Yeah, okay. (laughs) They're so great. They're so great. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is dumb. No, no, no. Let me wind back to the clock. Baby Obadiah gets a PlayStation 4. He's so excited. He doesn't like Assassin's Creed games, but there's no games to play. So he ends up with Assassin's Creed 4, which is just a pirate game. And they pretend like it has something to do with Assassin's Creed. And when you're on your boat... You could you could go sing, and the guys on the boat would sing a sea shanty to yeah. you, and it became weirdly compelling. <laughs> you were like, "Wait, this is this is actually kind of cool, guys!" And these TikTok sea shanties, shut up. So you think They're you'll awesome. spend some time on TikTok on your own just to catch these things to follow it? You mean will I? Or How have about you? I have been. <laughs> That's so funny. This would be what would get you there. Because, again, he's, I mean, always been a part of TikTok, but not like he doesn't spend the hours I think the rest of us do at night (laughs) just going through all these trends and stuff. And and now this is what gets you to spend time with it. I have my reasons that I'm not a TikTok guy. I'm not going to get into them here. Just accept the fact that they're good reasons and move along, citizen. (laughs) But these sea shanties, Nikki. This will do. That'll do, pig. Aww. That'll do. Hey, congratulations then, because as long as you're spending time watching them, that's all that matters to us. 
and people are okay. It's so great because people keep adding to them. So yes, I have found some EDM sea shanty remixes on TikTok, and I'm just like, dude, this is so freaking great. This is it. So if you have any good ones, uh, feel free. If you follow <laughs> Radio U Official, you can just message us there on TikTok, and then send us any of the shanty ones to Obi, and he'll be enjoying them. <laughs> oh, I'll be waiting for him to bring my sugar, tea, and rum. Nice. Good one. <laughs> You're listening to The Riot. Let's all work together today to live life with the patience of a Nikki dealing with an Obadiah. You gotta hang in there and get through it. You're listening to The Riot. So I told you guys, Nikki and I were going to be exploring alternate means of income, alternate sources of income. Because, you know, it's about developing income streams, Nikki. It is. You know, you know, Diversify. You <laughs> Yeah, you can create a job or you can create an income stream. A job means you got to work. An income stream means you're getting paid and you're not doing a lot of work. So which one do people prefer? <laughs> well, Nikki, uh, I can't tell you that because you have to come to my seminar. It's actually going to be at the Holiday Inn at the airport okay. with the Olive Garden attached to it. So, because um, that's the type of place you go to. Uh, so yeah. for this, uh, what type of things are we stealing then or are we should be looking okay. at? Okay, now get a load of this. This, I mean, this is one of those unique things where opportunity meets your occupation and they come together. Uh, what we have is a captain of a of a Russian destroyer, mm-hmm. you know, like a, a ship, right? He worked with some people to steal... The propellers from on the, the destroyer. Yeah, they did. So it says it was so, two 13 ton bronze propellers from the right. destroyer ship. Wow. It gets better. I mean, the propellers are gone. Everybody's like, where are the propellers? We can't go. He replaced the propellers with low cost propellers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so cheaper ones? So then people would yeah. would think, oh, are these the nice ones? But instead, they were less money. Whoa, that's a whole big... He came up with a scheme there. <laughs> and then he sold the bronze. The expensive ones? Amazing. I guess I'm just... Amazing! I don't understand. Like, I mean, bronze propellers, how, how do you get rid of these things without it being tied? I mean, obviously, people figured out, but how would you think you could get rid of them without... It coming right back to you somehow, because who else is selling these things? I have no idea. But what do you think about Craigslist? You just throw them up there. <laughs> see, see what offer you get to like just wait. So what had happened is this destroyer was in dry dock. It was going to be converted huh? into a floating museum. So that's why this was able to happen during that time. It wasn't out and about. It was going to be changed into a museum. And I mean, you know, like, in fairness, that's fine. Like, they didn't need those nice propellers anyway. It's just going to be sitting here. People are going to be on it. Like, well, it's fine. That's fine. It's not fine. He's totally busted. But I'm just saying that this is one of those things where it would probably never occur to you. Like, hey, we're going to steal the propellers. (laughs) Now, that's probably something that's out of our reach, like you and me. Yeah. But there's probably a lot of things that are right where you are that you would think, oh, we could never get that out of here. My friends, I present to you the Russian propellers. So I think if I've done the conversion correct, it looks like he was trying to end up with the commander guy making about $530,000 with the switch that he did. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh, not bad. But I mean, again, it didn't work out for him, but that's what he was uh, trying to defraud the state with that much money. It usually takes me sometimes a whole year to make that much money. And he's just (laughs) doing that. And, you know, a couple of hours, a couple of days. Like, I mean, it's like, that's pretty good. You know, I'm curious. Do you think some people came to him, to the commander with this idea? Or or was it his idea? Yeah, or was it his idea? And did he think it up? He must have figured it out from somewhere. Like, this was a possibility. So I'm just curious if people came to him to try to turn him into stealing from his own ship. You know, I think that's probably the case. I'll bet you that it wasn't his idea. I'll bet somebody approached him mm-hmm. uh, with with this scheme. But then again, you know, Nikki, if he's in charge of a whole ship, he's probably a pretty smart guy. 
If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Okay, so I told you that Nikki and I were going to present to you some alternative options for income, a.k.a. things that you could steal. Now, the first one, admittedly, was very specific. It was a little harder because first you had to be the commander of a Russian destroyer that was about to be put in dry dock. Not all of us find ourselves... (laughs) In that situation. It feels like that was a bit more initial setup than maybe we we're wanting to do in order to make some money. Okay, but how about this? This is, I mean, this is something that you and I, the average citizen, see all the time. Nikki, do you ever see construction sites? I do, yeah. See them all over, don't you? Absolutely. A lot of buildings still going on during these times. Yeah, so what do you think about this? What if you rolled into that construction site and... Uh, You just snagged yourself a toilet. That's what the person was stealing? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. I mean, you can steal a lot from a construction site. Uh, I just didn't know that toilets were the option. This guy is stealing toilets from construction sites and reselling them. Uh, How much does he get for that, though? This seems like this is a lot more work than the other one. Uh, this is the, I like, they don't say. Like, in this article, oh, no, no, okay, see, it's through no toilet paper with more than... It, I don't know. Like uh, maybe a hundred bucks is what this seems like it might be. And I know what you're thinking. Like a hundred dollars isn't that much. But see, if you, let's say, all right, five toilets a day. How long do you think it takes? Like installing a toilet takes a long time. Ripping one off the base doesn't take that long. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, there's no wa- like there's no water in these things. So you know, you just go, you take it off the base. Let's say you can steal five of them conservatively in ninety minutes. Well, the problem with this though is that this is coming out of Japan in a smaller area in a prefecture where houses were under construction. This guy took a toilet, started with the first one, your first toilet, right? Your first hit, and we all remember our first toilet. <laughs> he then took the toilet to a, a secondhand, like, used store where you could sell it to them. So the problem is that he wasn't keeping quiet about reselling these things. So it was obvious. The police just had to go check a few places out, like, hey, has anybody come in recently selling toilets? Because then after the first one, he went back, stole another one and another. And because he was going to the secondhand store, they were able to figure out the schedule and this guy. And then he was taken into custody. Well, and that's why, see, Nikki, his fence was no good. You've got to either fence the stuff yourself or you got to get somebody you can trust. Correct. I Like, just taking him down to the used whatever store. No, 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 no. See, he's doing it all wrong, which is why we're talking about this. Nikki and I, right now, are willing for a percentage to become your toilet theft consultants. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk you through the steps. We're going to try to connect you with the right people, and we're going to help you get off the ground with your toilet thieving business <laughs> we can help and, you know, the, the, the amazing thing is this is this is a startup with like no cost all you're going to need are a couple of tools which you can probably steal from a neighbor so it seems like this guy worked at uh, for the construction company and he was not a construction worker though he worked inside one of the offices he knew the schedules of when people would and would not be there so he would go and steal the toilets one after another selling them the local news this started in October he was known as the god of toilets that was his uh name in the news and people were trying to figure out who this guy was he took about 18 items it took over three months most of them were toilets so there were a few other things and they were able to trace him back again to the man who sold the items to the secondhand shops in the area Okay, now we've been on this for a while, Nikki, but go with me here. Mm-hmm. What do you and I, What time do you and I get out of bed every morning? Very early in the morning, like say four thirty. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. let's back that up to we back that up to four. You and I just leave a little early. We had a construction site on the way into the studio. You <laughs> snag just, a toilet. I don't want to. You drive. You drive to the other side of town and sell it. And we just do this for a while and like early enough in the morning, we're going to be fine. No, I don't like toilet stuff. Like even if it's new, I don't don't want to. It hasn't been used. It doesn't matter. It's still, it's still the thing. Um, but well, it's going to take a lot longer to steal a sink fixture, and I don't think they're the, it's going to be as easy to fence them. So. Why don't I be the person that sells it or like schedules the the times and stuff? Like, let me just do the paperwork around it. You can be the one to actually steal the toilet. 
Are you good with logistics? The Riot Radio U. So Nikki and I spent the last 15 minutes giving you some options about things that you could steal. And, uh, you know, Nikki wasn't on board for pretty much any of it, which is fine. (laughs) You know, you're going to encounter uh, different levels of criticism uh, (laughs) as you move forward in life. Yeah. And I feel like zeroing in on Nikki's criticism is important for what comes next. Um, It's because, you know, you see, I presented ideas, two different ideas. She's not really on board for either one. So given that we haven't established a pattern yet, but I'm about to make a confession. This is going to be the third item. And I feel like after we judge your, uh, what happens next, Nikki, we might be able to establish a pattern. Okay. So my response concerning what this third item is. Yeah. So like what it is that I have to confess. What do you have to confess? I'm ready. Oh, don't. If you bought a new Oculus, I can't even. <laughs> You're not in the same room as me, but I could just go through the phone. You're putting us back in this situation again. <laughs> you bought an Oculus again. <sighs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> You're, so... You're so. Okay, so it's a long history with Obi and an Oculus. A long, long go- time. <laughs> Does anybody else feel like we're close to establishing a pattern of negativity? Is that it? I'm just not being supportive of you? I was so Does supportive any- of all the other Oculuses I can't anymore. I actually, when I got I ordered it like forever ago. You did? Uh, so um, when when it came, I was like, what you, you know doing? what? Let's not tell Nikki. Let's just not tell her. She just doesn't have to know. She doesn't know. The audience doesn't have to know. It's perfectly acceptable for you to have things in your life that people don't know about. You just have something in your life that they don't know about. No big deal. Um, And then I thought, no, I'm going to slip up at some point. I'm going to mention something. And Nikki's going to go, well, that doesn't matter because you don't have, oh, my gosh, did you get one? It's better to be truthful. Listen, I appreciate your honesty early in on this. My thing is I know you had an Oculus in the fall. Not for long, and then you sold I had one it. In this, wait, <laughs> you, every tell, season look, we had one. Okay, we had one fall of nineteen. Sold it. Sold it. Had one spring of night of uh, twenty. Sold it. Sold it. <laughs> Bought one fall of twenty. Sold it. Sold it. Now it's winter of twenty one. Wow. Whee! My concern with this is that you, and I know you sold it and always made money, so it's perfectly fine. It's a lot of effort, That's right. but it's perfectly fine. When you sold this one, it was at the closer to the middle end of December. I feel like the turnaround time is pretty, why don't you just keep that one? <laughs> like, I know why, no, I agree with you. You should have just kept that well, one instead of selling it. I wish that I would have in retrospect. With it, when it was gone, I was like, man, I really wish I hadn't sold it, but I did that be, out of necessity. And so uh, there's a little, uh, I had the capital this time. And uh, I mean, this is pretty much it. Like I, I not all, I'm not allowed to do anything again ever. This is the last thing I'm allowed to do. But uh, obi has been back um, just for having a fever again. He's been back at home broadcasting from there. Did you buy this when you were at home or was this before you went with the fever? It was, it was before. It was before you came and blamed that. Okay. (laughs) No, I no. Well, I mean, maybe I was having symptoms. You're having symptoms ahead of time. Listen, we're supportive. You made, you still bought it all with cash. You sold it all, so you're just selling one to just move into the other one. Um, I just, I hope you use it. Yeah. Well, you know what, Nikki? Uh, Me too. It's fine. (laughs) I can't believe you got another one. Oh, all right. We all have our I, uh, things that we like to get, and that's good. <laughs> it's good you have something I that knew, you're excited about. <laughs> I knew that, uh, like I said, I, that we just I needed to get it out of the way. I just needed to rip the band aid right off. You should have told me tomorrow, though, so I have like the whole weekend <laughs> just to process <laughs> it and stuff. And then we're out on Monday because uh, you know we're not in in that day, and uh, it's worse to riot. So I could have had a nice long weekend to be. Able to come back and see you on Tuesday and just be like, yes, he's got an Oculus again. <laughs> yeah, but it's fine. Worst of the Riot Podcast. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot Podcast. Oh, no, I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. You know Indeed. what you need to do is just get on death row.